Hello friends. So today's video is going to be first impressions for the game Forspoken. I'm going to alternate between cons and pros and at the end I'll give my overall thoughts. I'm going to start with the cons and the first one would be way too much hand-holding. Un unbelievable amount of hand holding. And I know that not every game is meant to be the kind that you want to throw your remote through the screen. I get that every game isn't a Souls game. I understand that some games are telltale type games where you barely are interacting with the game. You sometimes press a button or turn-based games where you could literally leave the remote for hours and then come back to the game and just make your next move. Forspoken is not that. It is not the kind of game that was marketed as easygoing, relaxed, you're just there to have a good time, cozy type of game. It definitely seemed like the kind of game that was going to be very demanding of your attention, that you were going to be kept on your toes, you're going to have to learn this magic and then this magic spell and figure out what would work best against certain enemies. You have to strategize, but you have to strategize very quickly. And the game did not deliver on that. When you're starting... <laughs> It makes sense that you get tutorials and you're being told what to do, but it took it to another level that it was almost unbearable to play. It was so frustrating. There was one part where you're being told by your cuff that you need to rest, and then the game is basically telling you, go find a place to rest. So you find a house, and you get in the house, and you're like, all right, I gotta rest. And you see a bed, and then you go over there, and then it tells you, by the way, if you wanna rest, you can do that at beds. And you're like, I know, I one am a human being that exists and acknowledges that you have to sometimes lay down in a bed. Like I know what beds are and the game's already telling me and it's already indicated to rest. I don't need it to stop the gameplay so that it can have some information come on the screen and say, hey, sometimes you gotta rest on these beds. We should be safe here. Good, I'm exhausted. I get it, I know that. So I was just, that's a small example, but that kind of thing in the game would happen so often where you would start to play and you're like, okay, cool. I've got the information. I'll get more information later, but at least I can play for a bit. And it would just consistently stop you to tell you something really obvious. Switching to a pro, I will say I do really love the full entire use of the screen. One of my favorite things in games is when they do take advantage of the full screen and that you don't just get a bunch of information everywhere all over the screen. Here's your health, here's your magic, here's your destination, here's a map. I don't like the clutter. I like when I feel like I'm there as much as possible and that I'm able to view as much of what they have put a lot of work into creating. And I definitely feel like Forspoken, it did that very well. The scenery, running around, being able to look at everything, I thought they did so well because they took full advantage of the screen. There's not much else to elaborate on that. I just really appreciate when a game has a way of, here's where you're needing to go, and you can establish that by the little map, essentially, at the top, the kind of compass, if you will. You have that, but it's small, it's discreet, and you, if you need other information involving your spells and such things, you can press buttons so they come on the screen, but otherwise the screen is just filled with whatever area you're in. That said, one of the next cons would be that the game feels far too empty. I was really excited for when finally, finally, after a couple of hours, you're like, okay, I can run around and explore. And then you do run around and explore and there's nothing to see. There's barely anything. And the idea of the game, if you don't know the setup for the story, is that within this magical land, something has turned a lot of people into basically zombies. And so everybody left is now within this one city and they can't really go outside the city or they run the risk of turning into these zombie-like beings and it affects animal life as well. So our main character, as she is exploring, I thought that there would be enemies everywhere because the entire population basically of mankind, aside from people within the city or who have migrated to the city, would be now these zombie things and same with wildlife. No, that's not really the case. And then I was also expecting a lot more to do with ruins or cities that have been abandoned. And I feel like this game missed a great opportunity for that. Because of this setup, 
that is what I was expecting to find, and that's not really what I got. Now, if I were to play further, maybe that would change. Maybe there would be a lot more to abandoned cities and there would be a lot more enemies, but it felt like they spent all this time developing this landscape and then forgot to put things within it. This leads into the next pro. This isn't really a pro for me, but this is probably a pro for some other individuals. Some people like low obligation. They like exploration, but they don't want a ton of combat. They don't want to have to find a bunch of weaponry and things. They just kind of want to explore and enjoy that experience. And if that's you, then this really is low obligation exploration. I personally prefer when there's more to do and when there's more to see and there's more to engage with. But I know for some people, they like something that they can sit for a second, play a little bit, go do something, come back to it and not feel like they're gonna have died in that short amount of time that they stepped away. I do think though that this means that this game could potentially be a beginner accessible game. I did mention before that I feel like it holds your hand too much, but if somebody's never really played that many video games before, if they're just kind of getting into it, or maybe they like video games, but they don't have the muscle memory, they didn't grow up playing games, so sometimes it takes them some time, then the previous con of there being too much hand-holding alongside with this, the idea of it being a little bit more low obligation exploration. I could see this being a good game for beginners, specifically beginner adults, because I do think that this game couldn't really decide who its target demographic really is, because there's some aspects of it that feel much more mature and it makes sense for it to have a mature rating, but then there's other things that feel very a little cheesy and cliche, and so it just feels like it couldn't quite decide. But I could see this being a game that people who maybe don't typically play video games could like. The last con would be too little gameplay. So I would start to play, and then I would be excited that I was actually getting to do something, especially because the gameplay itself and the literal movement, which was a thing I talked about being so excited for with this game, the literal movement looked so fun. And I am somebody who absolutely loves just moving around in games, as silly as that sounds. I love in something like Immortals Phoenix Rising where you can climb whatever and then you can jump off of something and just glide. I think it's so fun. And so anytime you get a game that maybe the storyline isn't great or maybe the storyline just doesn't even exist and it's all about the gameplay, when it's fun to just move around, I, I'll take it. I'm happy but you have to give me time to play. Oh my gosh, this game would, I would start to play and then it would be like, okay, follow this person. And then you're stuck following someone and they're talking and then there'd be like a cutscene, and then like, okay, now you're following them again. And I'm like, when am I going to be done following this person so I can move? And then <laughs> you'd be done following that person. You're like, okay, I'm going to explore this city now. And then you would move and it'd be like, oh, cutscene, And then you're like, oh, okay, fine. Can I like start now though? And then you would start and then it would tell you like, oh, go talk to people. And you would go to talk to someone and then nothing would come of it. And you're like, why did I bother talking to that person? It would tell you to do something and to start a quest. And so you'd go talk to someone to start a quest, but there is no quest. So the gameplay, it wasn't as fun as I was hoping. And also there was so little of it. Let me play the game. Let me play the stupid game. I would advise staying off the main thoroughfares. Less chance of being spotted. You know, we should stay off the main thoroughfares. Less chance of being spotted. I will say I understand that this is pretty common for the beginnings of a lot of games. So I'll cut it some slack and say that it seems like there's a lot to take in and there's a lot to tell you and that it's gonna build, build, build. But at some point you need to stop building and you need to know how to pace 
the amount of information you're given with the amount of gameplay. Because I played for a few hours and there was not a lot of actual playing involved. It was a lot of just hoping that we would finally get somewhere. And again, it's it doesn't seem like the kind of game that is turn-based, story-driven game. An overarching kind of theme here is that I don't feel like this game really knew what it wanted to be. It couldn't decide if it wanted to be a story-based game, if it wanted to be a game that's all about the gameplay, or some kind of hybrid. It seemed like it didn't accomplish any of that. It didn't accomplish something in the middle, and it didn't accomplish any of the extremes. It just kind of sat unevenly within. It's clunky. That's the thing, is it's clunky. Last positive <laughs> would be the cats. The cats are really cute. Hey, Homer. I'm sorry I'm late, I know. You miss me? I, I did kind of want to keep playing just because the cats are cute and the fact that you can go find cats is cute, but I feel like I'm really trying with the positives. I wanted this to be you know, a little bit of negatives, a little bit of positives, the pros and the cons, but I was really trying to find some pros. I've been thus far pretty disappointed with this game. I'm not eager to pick it up again. There isn't anything that really feels like it's a challenge. There's not anything with the story that I really care about aside from the cats. If you've played further and if you've gotten really far into the game or you've beaten the game, let me know and let everybody else know he, who sees this if it improves, if you think it gets better. And if it gets better, does it get better exponentially so? Do some of the cons go away? Or would you say that they do kind of stick around? If you didn't enjoy those first few hours, you're probably not going to enjoy what comes next. Let us know. But anyway, that's it for first impressions of the game for Spoken. It was one of my most anticipated releases. So... I'm just disappointed, especially because it doesn't matter. I was just going to say, because I've been waiting so long, because they announced this so long ago. So I was really looking forward to it and it's just not lived up to. It's what I thought was its potential within its trailers. Fingers crossed that Final Fantasy 16 is as good as it looks because I'm tired of games looking really good and then not delivering. But anyway, again, let me know your thoughts on the game. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.